It's the largest Indian massacre that's occurred in United States history, but not a lot of people know about it. We're here to honor them. History has always been one-sided, and now we have a voice that can tell that story. The story of more than 400 women, children, and elders who drew their last breath here on a bitter cold winter's day. When you hear the Northwestern Band of Shoshone, you think 1863, uh, Bear River Massacre. Historians say only about a quarter of the people from the tribe survived. We would cry and we would feel the pressure and the weight of what happened here. We could, we could feel that the bodies were trapped here and that their souls were kind of trapped here. Now the descendants of those survivors are reclaiming their story by reclaiming the land. What does it mean to have the ownership once again, to go to the places and spaces that were once gated off or closed off because someone else owned this area? It's powerful. I've always felt like I was a visitor and I don't feel that way anymore. It's a sacred place. I mean, our people died here. Um, we're fortunate enough to have our families live through it. So I think it's our responsibility to become the caretakers. They survived. And I, I would like to think that those types of feelings and those types of values were, were given to us, a gift of being more resilient, more determined than anything else to continue on. And hopefully we can give that to our children. That's our gift to you. So that's what she was talking about right there. Yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that uh, foam and stuff end up in the river. Brad Perry serves as the project manager and vice chairman of the Northwestern Band of the Shoshone Nation. It's been extremely important to us uh, to be here. Um, and to have this place. One that could be the site of a new cultural center, amphitheater, and interpretive walking trail if funding for Perry's plan comes through. It's a rebirth of the place, but there are significant ecological benefits from what we're doing. The ecological plan is to turn back the clock, so to speak, so the land can look more like it did when Perry's ancestors were drawn by the natural hot springs to camp here during winter months. We're quite literally just reversing irrigation, which we're not farmers, so we don't, we don't need to use the water like they do. They do a really great job here of doing that, but our people would have been used to trout flowing through these things. So you can see this today, no trees, no river water. Hopefully in five years, when you come back here, this thing will be full of creeks and ponds and, and animals and different things. We'll have pushed enough dirt out of the way to let the water uh, meander its own way back to the Bear River. That will clean the water. It will increase the water flow, water quality. And so everything that empties into the Bear River is taken back down to Utah. So this helps the Great Salt Lake because our water, without raising consumptive use, will be flowing back into the, into the Bear River. So users downstream can use it. The first phase of the process is happening now, the removal of invasive species of plants. A Russian olive will take up to 75 gallons of water a day out of the system, and then what it leaves is pollutants of salt and sulfur. Perry estimates there are somewhere between 200,000 to 250,000 Russian olive trees here that need to be destroyed to fix water quality issues in the river. This is the largest polluter to the Bear River in the entire Bear River watershed, this section from up there through here. We're hoping that it's cleaner, there's more volume, it's better for drought control. The project is paving the way for a clearer path to what was, so the next generation can fully grasp what they can be. It's coming back home and to hear the nature, you, know, it's, you can kind of give a sense of uh, how peaceful it is here and, and what a really happy place it, it was until the event. Maybe this will give insight to the rest of the people that are around that it's possible, that we need to clean the water and we need to take care of what we have, what we've just destroyed.